It's another edition of Time About the Movies, and today we're wrapping up January 1994 with January 28th. So uh, we've got four movies to look at today. Let's not waste any time. We'll just jump right on into it. And we'll start off with the biggest new release of the weekend. That is Madeline Stowe in the neo-noir thriller, Blink. We have a donor. I pulled a few strings at the eye bank. Too much at first. I'm gonna open your lids. What's the first thing I'm gonna see? Humans reach visual maturity at age nine. I'm always blind at eight. You just don't know what you'll see. Mr. Cachetto? It's all right. Go back to bed. She's dead, right? Is there anything else you can tell me about Valerie Wheat? She was a noisy lover. Did she have a boyfriend that you know? I could hear him. You got a name on him? You know his name? Oh, baby. Oh, baby. <laughs> so your eyes are having a delayed reaction to reality. I guess you could say that. So what is that? Your eyes are driving the train and your brain's the caboose. It hasn't caught up yet? I'm just beginning to think this guy is a figment of her imagination. Yeah, I'm telling you, she's the key. You're good at your job. My job is the only thing I am good at. Well, I doubt that. I can't see things that are right in front of me, and I can see things that couldn't be there. You identify the copper as the murderer. Can she see or not? You think I'm an agenda? You think I made him up? I have one or two minor things on my mind, not the least of which is finding this killer before he finds you. It's a great trailer, by the way. I mean, that's just... It just gets you so psyched about what you're about to see. This movie about this woman who... She's been blind for so many years. And she finally gets these new eyes that allow her to see. And one of the first things that ends up, she ends up seeing is a, is a killing. And now the killer is after her. And it's a good concept. It's a good concept. A good, sto a good story. Uh, great direction by Michael Apted, who also... We talked about his movies before. We talked about Class Action, a very underrated thriller of his... Uh, we also looked at Thunderheart and also the Up series. He's been a really good director, and I think he has a really good eye for this type of a th movie. It works really well. I will say, though, it's not quite as perfect as that trailer makes it out to be. It is kind of a little too formulaic, but you know what? The trailer does definitely deliver what the movie gives you. I mean, Madeline Stowe gives a great performance in here playing Emma Brody, the woman who gets the who's the centerpiece of this. Aiden Quinn has a good role in here, so does James Romero from The Warriors. And it's just a really good movie. It's a really solid film. The way the camera work uses her abilities, to, these new abilities that she has, with these new, and these things that she thinks that she sees, but they're not really there. It's just an interesting concept here. And you got to give a lot of credit to Dante Spinotti, the cinematographer for this, who does a very good job here with this particular setup. Uh, Spinotti, of course, is best known for his cinematography work with films like *L.A. Confidential*, *The Insider*. He's done a couple. He's done many Michael Apted movies. He's done a couple of superhero movies: *X-Men: The Last Stand*, uh, *Hercules* with Dwayne Johnson, and most recently *Ant-Man and the Wasp*. And he does a very good job with the cinematography in this particular film. And um, like I said before, it's just a really cool-looking film. It's a very stylistic-looking thriller. And it's one that's kind of a little bit underrated. I don't think a lot of people really know about this movie all too much, but I think it definitely does deliver. Some elements are a little bit too, like I said, a little bit too predictable. Like, you can kind of tell what the kind of setup this is going to end up being. And um, But other than that, though, I think it does a pretty good job for doing is for this type of a story. And I think it does very well at its job. And uh, also of note here, Dana Stevens, the screenwriter for this, this is actually her first movie. Uh, you may know that name of recent works such as The Woman King, which is supposedly going to be a big Oscar contender at the time of this posting, which is on December 15th, 2022. Uh, I still haven't seen that movie yet, but I really do want to, though. But um, this was the first movie she ever wrote, so 
Um, uh, yeah, so I don't know. So I thought I brought uh, toy boat. <laughs> I thought I'd bring that up. So, uh, like I said, Blink is actually a really good movie. If you haven't seen it, definitely check it out. It's a very cool looking thriller, and another great underrated film from Ma Michael Apted, a really good director. So, uh, that's Blink. Uh, let's move on to the next movie, and that is Car Fifty Four. Where are you? Not running away from my duty. <laughs> running away from you. Wherever you go, there's that's the follow. Oh, my God! Two men on a mission. Officer Two. Officer Muldoon. We have the lowest reported crime rate in the whole city. Of course you do. You don't report any of it. They can outrun any killer. They're getting away! They can protect any witness. Oh, oh. there's no time for a nap. And what they lack in good instinct. Hey, help! Police! Police, help! Right there! They make up for with good intentions. You've got a big booger right here. From the people who didn't bring you lethal weapons comes a story so daring. Yeah, you want even bigger? We got bigger. Here it is, the M60. You can do forestry with this Rambo, baby. A story so romantic. I brought you some flowers. <laughs> what more could a man ask for? A story so powerful. You'd better bring protection. Does anybody have a mail off? David Johansson, John McGinley, Fran Drescher, Nipsey Russell, Rosie O'Donnell, Daniel Baldwin, Jeremy Piven, Tone Look, The Ramones, and Al Lewis. Car 54, where are you? Much more. You gotta love how you can tell a movie looks like it's made in 1993 or 1994, even though it was clearly made back in 1990. Yeah, this is another one of those movies where it came from Orion Pictures, and Orion Pictures at this time was going through bankruptcy, and a lot of the movies that they had filmed and already ready to go were sitting on a shelf for the longest time. And this is one of those movies. This is a movie that's been sitting on a shelf for four years, and then it finally gets dumped out in January. And really, like I said before, if you didn't know that this was made in 1990, you really couldn't tell that this was actually made in 1993 for a 1994 release because you have David Johansson, you've got John C. McGinley, Fran Drescher, uh, Rosie O'Donnell, uh, Jeremy Piven, Tone Loke, Penn and Teller in here, Daniel Baldwin, um, Nipsey Russell, Al Lewis, um, uh, names that were still making work at the time, but honestly, honestly, you, you'd really have to look very closely to see whether or not it was 1990 or 1994 because honestly you couldn't really tell from that trailer alone but um yeah when you actually see the movie you could pretty much tell what this movie was that this movie was made back in the early 90s and it was actually made as a, as a musical comedy but they ended up releasing the film without the musical interlude so they took all that stuff out and they made an adaptation of a tv series that i had never even seen that even if I had never seen it, I really wouldn't have enjoyed this movie because I really didn't enjoy this movie. This was not a good movie on any level. Um, it just wasn't funny. It just wasn't. It just wasn't very funny. It felt like a movie that they were trying to just stick stuff to the wall and see what works or not. But um, uh, short answer is none of it really worked. It's a shame because I mean, David Johansson and John C. McGinley can be very good when they're on screen, but. The chemistry just isn't there. I think if they had a better script to work with, and maybe it could work that way, but not with this type of a movie. A movie that's been sitting on the shelf for as long as it has. It definitely shows why in the final cut of the film, and it's a shame, too, because there's great talent involved here, just not a very good script to work with in the end. So, Anyway, that's Car 54, Where Are You? So let's move on to the next movie, and that is John Madden's Golden Gate. Que se convirtió en un so yeah, as you can probably tell from the fact that it's just the title, I really couldn't find a whole lot of footage in terms of trailers or commercials for this. And it's probably a good thing because I've never seen this movie. I didn't even know that John Madden did this movie. And um, so I can't really go into it too much. But I will just talk about the plot. Uh, basically set in San Francisco, in the 19, it tells the story of a 1950s G-Man played by Matt Dillon who ends up in the FBI's communist prosecutions. Uh, which leads him to become involved with a young Chinese-American woman played by Joan Chen, whose father he helped put, to put in prison. 
you also have Bruno Kirby and um, Zima in here. And like I said before, it's directed by John Madden, who also would later become known to direct films such as Shakespeare in Love and Captain Corelli's Mandolin. But this is another one of those early movies where he, it really didn't wor work. It really was just a forgettable movie. And it was mostly panned by critics back then. At least that's what I've been hearing, I should say. Like I said, I haven't seen the movie. But um, yeah, considering the fact that I never even heard about this movie until now, that should pretty much tell you everything you need to know about this particular movie. So uh, that's Golden Gate. Um, now let's move on to our last movie here. A movie you should know about. Nicolas Cage, Laura Flynn, Laura Flynn Boyle, and Dennis Hopper in Red Rock West. What kind of work you look for? I was hoping to get on a drilling crew. Why don't you try, uh, try Red Rock? Maybe somebody there can head you in the right direction. I thought you were supposed to be here last Friday. You are here for the job, aren't you? And you're Lyle from Dallas, right? Right. There's the five, like we agreed. Just to go out to the house, break in. When she comes in, you, uh, well, you know what to do. Your name's Suzanne? I don't know how to tell you this, but, uh, your husband, Wayne, he, uh, he plans to have you murdered. You know, I never did catch your name. I'm not going. Lyle from Dallas. Super fine. Super fine. What did I do? How are you? I get a divorce. and Moonstruck, Lara Flynn Boyle of The Temp and Wayne's World, and Dennis Hopper of Boiling Point and Blue Velvet. Does this mean that we ain't partners? Red Rock West. Red Rock West. Red Rock West. I swear, I did this yesterday. Like, this title should not be that hard to say, but I don't know why, but I keep always saying it the wrong way. Let me try it one more time. Red Rock West. Okay. So anyway, Red Rock West, um, a very underrated movie that I don't think a lot of people really talk about, uh, mostly because I don't think the studio who put this out really knew if it was going to be any good or not, because uh, the test screens for this were not strong, and the studio who put this out, Polygram Pictures, uh, they were about to sell this movie off to HBO as an HBO original movie, and actually showed it several times on HBO in the early 90s, and it actually got submitted to the Sundance Film Festival, and uh, kept making the rounds through various festivals, including select theater screenings in Germany, Paris, London. The Toronto Film Festival picked it up. And uh, they finally opened the movie up in theaters. And it didn't. And um, not a whole lot of people really saw it. It was only shown in like small theaters in L.A. and New York. But once the movie went to VHS, this slowly but surely growing audience was really coming around to it. And uh, I found out about it very later on, very much later on. And I gotta say, it is a really good movie. It's a really solid thriller with Nicolas Cage, uh, Laura Flynn Boyle. They're working off of each other really well. You got Dennis Hopper in there, and usually Dennis Hopper will never tr really turn in a really bad performance, except for something like Super Mario Brothers. But that's more than the ex that's the exception that, rather than the rule. But um, it is a really good movie. It's a movie that does a very good job of making you think it's a Western, making you think it's a Western, a thriller or a Western, I should say, making you think it's a thriller, making you think it's a Western. Could be seen as kind of a black comedy, could be seen as a film noir, could be seen as this dark, gritty ride, could be seen, something that's kind of lighthearted. It really keeps you on the edge of your seat as you're watching the movie, and you get so invested in these characters that you really you really have no idea what's going to happen as the movie goes on. I like movies like that where you don't know what the end result is going to be. And I think this movie does a phenomenal job of doing that, that keeping you on the edge of your seat, keeping you closely, closed in on what you think might happen, but actually revealing something completely different to you. And it's just a solidly made movie. It's a very stylistic film. The performances overall are great. J.T. Walsh also is very good in here. I didn't bring him up, but... It's a very solid film. This director, John Dahl, has made some pretty good movies. And uh, he actually made another great movie that came out and th that's going to come out this year called The Last Seduction with Linda Fiorentino, which we'll get to that one. He also did stuff like Rounders, uh, Unforgettable, Joyride, The Great Raid, 
some notable movies, but um, this is one of his strongest movies, and it's a very solid film. And it's a very well-made film, a very nice-looking thriller that keeps you on the edge of your seat. You have no idea what's going to happen. And it's just a solidly made movie. If you haven't seen Red Rock West, highly recommend you check it out. It's one of Nicolas Cage's most underrated movies, and um, it definitely deserves to be seen. Go ahead and check it out, Red Rock West. Can't recommend this one enough. And on that note, we wrap up another edition of Time About the Movies. Next time around, we'll jump into the start of February with six movies, including Jim Carrey in his first movie that really launched him into superstardom, Ace Ventura Pet Detective. Uh, we also have Catherine Heigl and Gerard Depardieu in the comedy My Father the Hero, Nick Nolte and James L. Brooks' I'll Do Anything. We also have Gunman, Romeo is Bleeding, and finally Paris, France. So six movies to look at next time around, and we'll jump into that on the next episode. But until then... Thank you very much for watching, and if you want to see more videos like this, please hit the plays on the next page, check out the previous episode, and I will see you guys tomorrow for another episode. So thank you for watching, I'll see you next time, and until then, as always, take care.